Hey, Brother Tompkins. Morning to you. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you on this lovely Sunday morning. Let's grab our blue psalm books as we stand, and let's go to number 205. He keeps me singing. We'll sing the first, second, and the fifth verse of number 205. Let's stand and stretch. Think about the words as you sing. Number 205. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Jesus with Earth, he be still, and all of my seven flows. Sing it out, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. He's me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me. Far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I know. Amen, amen. When you hear this name, what does it do to you, Jesus? What does it do to your heart? Amen. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Praise the Lord for our loving Savior who did so much for us. Amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. Hopefully you're enjoying the beautiful weather outside, and, and uh, thank you for coming, being faithful to the house of God uh, on, a, on a Sunday morning. So thank you so much. Let's bow for prayer, and uh, we will continue. Brother Paso, do you mind opening us up in prayer, please? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's go to number 248. 248. We'll sing all three verses of Now I Belong to Jesus, number 248. Think of the words. What a blessing it is to belong, isn't it? Amen. Let's sing all three verses. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul <clears throat> to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone. <clears throat> for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me. 
freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. Precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Died for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> On the way to church Wednesday night, I saw two groups of three deer. I'm not sure what that means, but they were like escorting us. On the way here. And I've seen lots of flocks of turkeys this week. <laughs> so um, Today's letter is from the Yinglings. Uh, they're serving with Baptist International Outreach. And uh, the title of the letter is Remembering Them. We are exhorted to remember those in bonds and those that suffer adversity in Hebrews 13.3. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Thank you for your faithful partnership with us. Together we have been and are able to continue to remember them. Satan fought the missions conference at Avon Park Correctional Facility hard this year. Just before the conference began, one of the inmates, a dearly beloved brother in the church, lost his long battle with depression and PTSD by hanging himself. This sad event cast a pall over the meetings. On the second day, the entire prison was locked down upon our arrival due to a medical emergency. However, the Spirit of God did his work in answer to your prayer. Several men rededicated their lives to the Lord and the church inside the prison added three new missionaries to their missionary support. Baptist International Outreach has been approved to serve as Avon Park Church's clearinghouse. Just this morning, one of the church leaders messaged me with good news. The church inside the prison has raised $1,015 for missions already. Thank you for helping us remember them. Next month, our home church will host the annual BIO Fall Meeting. This year, the theme is Arise, Go, Preach, from jo Jonah 3.3. The focus will be to encourage those who suffer adversity to arise, go, and preach again the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our second missionary table talk has been incorporated into the meeting. Veteran missionary and PTSD survivor Don Mingo will speak and help moderate these talks. I want to invite you to attend. The conference is scheduled for September 27th through 29th. And it tells how we can get more meeting. Um, if you cannot make it, please remember to pray for pastors, Christian workers, and missionaries who are suffering from adversity that will be attending this meeting. Uh, thank you for helping us remember them. I am putting together a trip to the Philippines for January 2024. I plan to connect with my daughter, Amber Yingling, who is the first team missionary with BIO in the Philippines. Together, we hope to visit our missionaries and pastors in Luzon, Negros Oriental, and Mindanao. S several of these missionaries and pastors have been struggling and suffering adversity. Please pray for this trip. I will purchase my ticket soon. And you could help him financially. He gives the information here. Thank you for helping us remember them. And let's pray for John, Nicole, Jeremiah, and Abigail Yingling. Lord, we do thank you for this missionary and this wonderful work that he's doing. Uh, we pr pray that uh, all these pastors and workers that are suffering adversity uh, will be strengthened through these conferences. Uh, we pray that you'll bless in a special way in our service this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want to encourage you to be faithful to your, giving your tithes and offerings, but then also, if you've not been challenged to give to missions, we have 60 missionaries that we support, and uh, we would like to increase that. We'd like to increase the amount that we give them, 
Uh, if you, you got to start, start out small, small, start out small. There was a time in our family when, when a dollar a week was stretching it. But we just kept sticking our necks out and watching God provide and kept stre the next year challenged ourselves to do a couple dollars, three dollars, just work, work uh, to get to that point where we could uh, be a, a large, a big blessing to folks. And uh, you, if you ask people who have faithfully given to missions, uh, you'll, you'll find people who God has blessed their finances. God has, God has uh, really poured out, poured, out, poured out the blessings in their life, and, uh, and they would encourage you to do the same, and that's what I want to encourage you. God, uh, God gives us the principles of uh, supporting his work through, through the tithes and offerings. He says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And he wants us to, to uh, trust him, trust him. I was reading um, a, a, a little blurb of a, of a book. And uh, if you look in the scriptures, um, the different people who came to Jesus Christ, uh, you notice what they immediately wanted to do. What did, what did Zacchaeus want to do after he came to Jesus Christ? He says, I want to give. You look at uh, just different people through the scriptures. A Abraham, when he met the, the king of Melchizedek, the priest of Melchizedek, what did he want to do? He wanted to give. And uh, God touches where your treasure is, there we heart be also. So I just want to say that in an encouraging way. Uh, I, it's something that our family practices, and we try to do our best to, to, to see God bless our, our finances. And we want, uh, I, want, I would love to see God do that for you. So. Just think about that, being in prayer, prayer about that is definitely something you need to be asking the Lord what would he have you do and uh, making sure that uh, your finances are blessed by God because he gives us those uh, riches of this world to, to be a blessing to others, not just to heap upon ourselves. Amen. Let's grab our songbooks. We're going to go to number, number 323, number 323. Let's stand and sing this song, the first and the second and the fourth verse. More about Jesus. In preparation for our scripture reading to follow, number 323. Join me on the first. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn, more of his holy will discern, Spirit of God, my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne. Riches in glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Let's grab our Bibles at this time. We're going to go to the book of Psalms. If you go to the middle of the Bible it, and you open it there, it should be the book of Psalms or very close. Psalms chapter 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalms 119. We're going to read the entire chapter. Just kidding. Just kidding. Hey, it wouldn't hurt, right? Amen. 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 One of these times for my... Uh, Adult Sunday school class. I think I'm going to give a. I'm going to ask for a vote. Should Should we read that at the beginning of our Sunday school class time? Right, Psalms 119. Every we know. Just kidding. It would be a good one, but it would take some time. Psalms 119. I'm going to ask Brother Tony if he would come and lead us in our scripture reading from Psalms 119.
Good morning. Open your Bibles to Psalm 119. We'll be reading verses 17 through 24. Psalm 119, verses 17 through 24. Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live, and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the, the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Let's pray. Father, it's good to be back in your house on this Sunday morning, Lord, after a week out in the world. We pray here right now, Lord, that uh, you do a work in us, speak to our hearts. You know, sometimes when we're reading your word, Lord, it's hard to take some of the teachings, Lord, but we know you have our best interests at heart, and it works out best when we follow your word, your precepts, your commandments, Lord, to do what you've told us to do. But that being said, Lord, we ask you to fill our pastor right now with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Give him the words that he needs to speak to us, Lord. May we take them to heart. May we be in, in study throughout the week, Lord, before we even get to the church house, that we're in your word every day so that we can... We can uh, Relate to what's going on, that you, you speak to us through your word and in prayer, Lord, and through our pastor, Lord. And um, sometimes we just come here and we, we're not reading our Bible every day. We're not in prayer every day. And then we, we can walk away thinking we're not getting nothing from the pulpit. But you speak to our pastor and you give him the words that we need to hear, Lord. And may we prepare ourselves that we can be ready to hear the message you have for us and then follow through with it, Lord. Increase our faith, Lord. Give us stronger backbones to withstand the load, Lord. We're not praying for a lighter load. We're praying for stronger backs here today and, and, and increase our faith. Help our unbelief, Lord, that we follow through and do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know I've been sealed till the day of redemption when Jesus will come and he'll take me away. Forever I'll live, oh yes, in a beautiful mansion. Gonna live with the saints in glory someday. My life was a wreck with burdens and care. I had no one to comfort. My poor soul within I drifted up on On life's stormy sea My life was all dark And gloomy for me One day I heard of a man Who died on a cross to save sin sick souls from a world that was lost. Then I called on Jesus, his precious blood covered me, and he lifted my burden, and he set me free. I know I've been sealed till the day of redemption when Jesus will come and he'll take me away forever I'll live oh yes in a beautiful mansion gonna live with the saints in glory someday Amen. I always love it hearing preachers sing. Praise the Lord. What a great song. Thank you, preacher. That was a blessing. Amen. Let's go to Psalms chapter 119. When I get to this portion of Scripture, where it says, verse 18, 
Open now mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. It reminds me of a scripture song. When I was uh, got saved down in Santa Monica, Louisiana, and uh, our youth group, uh, the youth pastor was Bob Graham. He's a pastor over in Olathe, Kansas now. Has been there for about 25, 30 years. But he was our, my youth pastor, and he would teach us a lot of scripture songs, and this was one of those songs. If you know the tune, sing along with me. Open thou mine eyes, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth, hide not thy commandments from me. Open thou mine eyes, open thou mine eyes. Try it again, hum it. Open thou mine eyes, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth, hide not thy commandments from me. Open thou mine eyes, open thou mine eyes. I love that, that song. Many times as I'm reading the scriptures, I'll just break into that song and just as a prayer to the Lord. Lord, open my eyes. Help me, to, help me not to just see your word as just something, a duty that I ought to do, although I should do it as a duty. But help me to see what you're trying to teach me. Help me to, to, to see deeper. Uh, the Word of God is like a gold mine that has treasure in it, more precious than gold. And uh, the truths are unsearchable. The truths are uh, inexhaustible. I love this chorus of this song where it says, Let me see this world, dear Lord. As though I were looking through your eyes, a world of men who don't want you, Lord, but a world for which you died. Let me kneel with you in the garden, blur my eyes with tears of agony. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. About 400 years ago, a shipload of travelers landed on the northeast coast of America. Their first year, the first year they established a town site, the next year they elected a town government, the third year the town government planned to build a road five miles westward into the wilderness. In the fourth year the people tried to impeach their own town government because they thought it was a waste of public funds to build a road five miles westward into a wilderness. At the end of the message I'll tell you the rest of the story. Heavenly Father, thank you so much Lord for this time you've given us to come together, please give us tender hearts that will listen to the Holy Spirit and what he is trying to tell us. More than anything, we ask that you please, that you would feed us from heaven. Help us, Lord, as the psalmist said, open thou mine eyes. Help us, Lord, to see the value of having opened eyes. Help us, Lord, to learn lessons from people in the scriptures who had their eyes opened. And help us, Lord, to desire the same thing. I pray, Lord, to you please fill me with the Holy Spirit's power. Lift up Jesus. May he receive the honor and the glory. Bind the strong one. Rebuke the evil one. May he have not have any interaction, any, any interference on what goes on at, on this property. This is your property. This is your embassy. And so we ask that you please, that you would re rebuke the evil one, that you would cast him out. And may the Holy Spirit have free reign more than anything. We need you. You promised that you would supply our every need. So we ask that you please. Please fill our needs. We're needy people. We need to hear from heaven. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Opened eyes. Opened eyes, the psalmist said. Open thou mine eyes. What will opened eyes do for you? First of all, opened eyes will allow you to see God's provision. If you want to jot the scripture down, Genesis chapter 21, 14 through 20. Genesis 21, 14 through 20. This is the story about when Abraham arose early in the morning. He took a bread, took the bread, a bottle of water. He gave it to Hagar and said to Hagar and Ishmael, listen, you're going to have to leave home. You, know, you remember the story. Hagar, she became an employee of Abraham when he spent some time down in Egypt. And when God called him back out of Egypt, he brought Hagar with him. And through the course of time and, 
and in a season of doubt of God's promise because God had promised him a child in his old age. Abraham was 75 when God gave him that promise. Uh, and Sarai, she was younger. She was uh, 65. And God had promised them. They had waited 15 years for a child. Now, God, uh, Abraham, he's now uh, 80, 90 years old. 90 years old. And he was wondering, God, you promised me to, to, promise me to give me a child. And you still haven't given me a child. And Sarai, she says, hey, what if, what if uh, God meant that uh, he would use one of your servants to, uh, to have children through them? And it wasn't through me. And uh, why don't you take Hagar and, uh, and, and have a child through her? And that's what he did. And ended up having Ishmael. Through the course of time, though, God did fulfill with Sarai and Abram, did, did fulfill this promise when Abraham was a good, ripe age of 100 years old. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Any, any, anybody want to start filling the nursery? Yeah. No, at 100 years old. He, God gave him this promise at 75 years old. You know, Abraham, he didn't die until he was 175 years old. He lived for another century after this promise was given to him. He didn't even think he was going to have one child and at the, by the time of his death. And, and through uh, Keturah, his third wife, after Sarai died, he had four boys. He had six sons by the time he died at 175 years old. You see, God can do anything. God can do anything. But here in this passage, we find that after... Isaac is born that Ishmael, he made a, evidently a smart comment or he, he offended Sarai in a certain way. And Sarai tells Abraham that, that Hagar and Ishmael's got to go. Well, this was, I mean, Ishmael's 13 years old at the time or so. And, and this was a, a heart wrench for, for Abraham because he loved him. This was his own flesh and blood. And so he, he gives them food. He gives them water. He sends them out. If you read it in verse 14, it says he, he took bread, a bottle of water, gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And it says the water was spent. She cast the child in one of the shrubs. She went and sat over against it a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is arise lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand for i will make him a great nation and god opened her eyes god opened her eyes and what did she see number one opened eyes allows you to see god's provision what did she see whenever she her eyes were opened by god she saw a well of water she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad a drink it was there all the time the provision was there all the time, but her eyes were closed to it until God opened her eyes. You see, Satan, he wants you to focus on what you lack. It's called greener grass syndrome. Sheep have a problem with that. They've got a good shepherd, and the shepherd, he makes sure their pasture is lush and green. And then there's that fence line. And the shepherd knows, and he can spot these sheep in the flock. These, fin, the, these sheep, that they're always at the fence line and reaching through the fence, and he has done a lot of work to make sure that they have plenty of good green pasture. But this sheep always says, hey, through that fence line is greener grass. And he'll stretch and stretch and stretch, and they'll always be trying to go to this, this unkept fill, field of this other shepherd. And he, what, what happens? And the shepherd has to get rid of this sheep because it will lead other ones in the same error. Satan always wants to get you to focus on what you lack, what you don't have, instead of what God has provided. God wants you to focus on what you have been given. What have you been given? All right, everybody, go like this, go. What have you been given? Air to breathe. I don't see anybody laying out cold on the pews lifeless we would have an issue if we did we'd be calling the paramedics all right we're all sitting up we're all enjoying we have we have life and that's what god has given us he's given us a chance to live he's given us a chance air to breathe he's given us a roof over our head this is a beautiful day 
We would love, I, I loved it those times in, in 2020 where we had those outside services. But as the sun gets up toward noon, it gets kind of uncomfortable. But think about it, there are churches and, and bodies of believers all over the world, especially in closed countries, that they have to go up on the mountainside and have a what they call a birthday party or, or some kind of educational meeting, i.e. a church service, secretly, out in the wild, they, and if it rains, if the wind blows, they have to deal with it. But what has God given us? A roof over our head. You feel, you feel the, the cool air? Yeah. We have air conditioning. Yeah. We've got all the accommodations. He's given us family. He's given us friends. He's given us salvation. Yeah. Are you saved? If, you, if you're saved, raise your hand. Are you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? If you're happy you're saved, say amen. Yeah. Amen. He's given you salvation. You see... Opened eyes allows you to see God's provision. But I don't have a million dollars in my bank account. But are you saved? Jesus said to, to, to the disciples who came back after they were able to cast out the devils. He says, don't rejoice because you're able to cast out the devils. Rejoice because what? Your name is written in heaven. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Have you received Christ as your Savior? Have you received that eternal life through Him? Then He says rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Hold up the Bible you have in your hand. Hold up that Bible. Put it to your chest and give it a hug. Give it a kiss. Oh. Do, you know, do you know how many languages around the world do not even have this? That's one page. They don't even have, if you, if you look on this page, they don't even have a two-letter word in their language. And yet, how many thousands of pages do we have? What are we doing with it? Do we, do we, do we toss it? Do we, do we, Sunday morning, I don't want a preacher to, to think I didn't read my Bible this week. Dust this thing off. Yeah, okay, it'll pass inspection. You know, the, 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 the sign of a blessed life is a well-worn Bible. This is a preaching Bible, by the way. My, my Bible reading Bibles are in my office. God has given us his word. And, and opened eyes. When God opens your eyes, he will, he will allow you to see that he's provided for your every need. You see, the Bible is a book for all time, for all men, for, for all, all situations. situations. It's, it's timeless. timeless. It's, it's amazing, amazing how, how it adjusts and how it, how it applies to every culture and every, every civilization, no matter where you are in the world. It is, that's, that's a divine book that can do that. that you, you, you know, you know the, the missionaries over in the jungles, they use the scriptures that have the same stories as we do, and God speaks to those jungle people, those people who are uncivilized, we call uncivilized. God speaks to them. And God teaches them his word. The same scripture. How is that possible? Surely, surely, it, it, we're more educated so we would understand better than they would. No, God puts it down on their level and teaches them through the same book. We talk about God's provision. God has provided. He's given us preachers. How many years have you sat here uh, in this church building or on this property or even when they, when, when they were before this building was built and they were meeting in the old church 30-something uh, 30, 30 years ago and this property has been preaching the word of God and God has been ministering to your heart and ministering to your heart and, and feeding you and feeding you and feeding you. That's God's provision. That's God's provision. What other nation is like our nation here in America where we have the freedom of religion? Where we have the, the we, ha we have the blessings of God so much so that we could take time out on Sunday to go to church. I think of some of these these poor these nations these nations in poverty and these people the the, the people in Tanzania come back come back to mind. Why Tanzania? Because they wake up every day to get food to eat and survive the day. 
to go to sleep at night to then wake up the next day to get food to eat to survive that day too. Go to church? That would mean I wouldn't be able to go find food. What would you do? I would starve to go to church. I don't know if I'm ready to pay that price. We don't have to even think about that. We all had great breakfast this morning, coffee and donuts. Don't fall asleep on me now, okay? Stay awake. I worked hard. I worked. got up early in the morning this morning to make those donuts for everybody. So make sure you stay awake. But God has provided for us. And if God will open our eyes, we would see that. We would see that. God has given us preachers. He's given us clear instruction from God's word. So what will opened eyes do for you? Opened eyes will allow you to see God's provision. Number two, opened eyes allows you to foresee God's wrath. To foresee God's wrath. There's a passage in Numbers chapter 22, if you want to jot that down. Chapter 22 of Numbers, verses 20 through verses 30. It's the story of Balaam and his donkey. Balaam and his donkey. Balaam was a man that was hired by Balak to curse the people of God. And he went to go and curse or to, to speak on God's behalf about the people of God. And he rode his donkey to go to this meeting. And it says in verse 20 of chapter 22 of Numbers, And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. Yet, but yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass, his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. And God, God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass, and she turned her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and the wall on that side. And, the, and when the, the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with the staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said, the donkey says to Balaam, What have I done unto thee? Thou hast smitten me these three times. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would that there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill thee in the... Our ass said to Balaam, Am I not thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so to thee? And Balaam says, No. Balaam is here, here talking to his donkey. His donkey had opened eyes, saw the angel of the Lord, and said, Did, did, you, did you catch what the donkey said? Am I not thine ass upon which thou hast written since the day I was thine unto this day? Do our animals, do our beasts, do they know that they're ours? Or are, are they just incognizant of it? She's saying, haven't you written on me ever since the day you bought me? She was aware that she was his. I don't know. I'm not a donkey whisperer or a horse whisperer. It's just interesting, this question. But this donkey, she saw, she had opened eyes, and she foresaw the wrath of God, and she was trying to protect him. What will open eyes do for you? It will help you, like this donkey, to foresee the wrath of God. It says in verse 31, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from thee these, me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now I would have slain thee and saved her alive. Proverbs 29, 
Proverbs 22, 3 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. And when you have opened eyes, you're able to foresee the wrath of God, like this donkey did. May we pray, Lord, give me the eyes of a donkey, but I can see your wrath. You see, Balaam saw nothing wrong in what he was doing. Again, our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. We can't trust our heart. That's why God gives us his word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall the young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. But Balaam, he saw nothing wrong in what he was doing. He saw his actions as innocent and right. Balaam saw his faithful donkey as keeping him from doing what was right. Until the Lord opened his eyes and then he realized he was wrong. If we'll pray, Lord, open my eyes. Like the psalmist said, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. We'll be able to foresee God's wrath and not put ourselves in a position. This angel said, I, had, the, had the donkey not done those things, you would have died. You better, you better get her, give her extra, pro, extra provender this evening. You better give, put extra straw on her bed and make her feel really comfortable because she spared your life, buddy. What will open eyes do for you? It will allow you to see God's provision. It will allow you to see, foresee God's wrath. Number three, opened eyes are an evidence of healing and life. In 2 Kings 4, 27 through 35, it talks of the story of Elisha, the prophet, And the lady whom she, he had promised or had foretold that she was going to have a child. She was the one who had created the prophet's chamber for her, for, for, for Elisha. And in return, as a thank you, he prof, uh, prophesied that she would have a child. And the child came and the child grew. Well, the child one day got sick and fainted and died apparently. And she went and laid him in the prophet's chamber that she had built in her house for Elisha when he come, came through town. And then took off on her donkey in her cart and, and, and told her servant, take me to the prophet. And she goes to the prophet, gets the prophet to come and pray over the child. And look what happens. It says, he went in therefore and shut the door. Upon them twain, him and the child, Elisha and the child, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked to, in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Number three, opened eyes are an evidence of healing and life. Opened eyes. Open eyes. You see, a painful spot can cause one to intently focus solely on that spot and cause them to forget all the beauty that still exists in the world. Yeah, have you ever had a situation in your life and it's a painful spot and you're so concentrating on that and your whole world starts to look dark and gloomy when there still are flowers out in the world? There's still great weather, and there's still beautiful scenery all around the world, but you can't see it because you're concentrating on that one spot. But opened eyes, when God opens your eyes, he'll help you see, hey, there's healing, there's life. There's no need to be focused on that. Let him open your eyes. What else will open eyes do for you? Number four, open eyes allows you to see God's protection. Open eyes allows you to see God's, God's protection. In 2 Kings, again, chapter 6, verses 14 through 17, it says, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and great hosts, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone before, gone, gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, master, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So Elisha and his servant were in his house, and the enemy army, they came, and they compassed uh, the whole city round about with all of their armies. 
And the servant, he went out in the morning, and he went out to do his morning duties, and he looks up, and he, he hears the, the clang of the swords and the, the horses and the and all everything that what they're do, what they're doing. And he yuk, sees this humongous army right outside his house. It scares him. But look at verse 17. Listen to verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Open his eyes. What did, why wasn't Elisha afraid? Because he knew what was out there. And look what this young man saw. He saw God's protection. It says, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now, who's got the better army now? It was there all the time, but the young man couldn't see it because his eyes were closed. That's the importance of having open eyes. You can see God's protection. Turn in your Bibles. Hold your place there in Psalms 19. 119 and go to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Psalms 91, read it with me, or follow along as I read. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Somebody say amen. When you have opened eyes, you see God's protection. You're not afraid because the TV says you got to be afraid. Sadly, there are so many Christians that worship and adore that little black box that hangs on the wall. If it doesn't say it, or if it says something, I've got to obey it. And you don't see God's protection all around you. You're so focused on the armies and what's this, this scary boogeyman that's out there. And you, don't, and you fail to see the fiery chariots and the armies that are in the mountains round about. If you have a problem with fear, how about you read every morning, if not every hour of the day, while you're in that state of fear, read Psalm 91. When you worry, when you worry about what could be, you're telling God, I don't trust you. You're sinning against him. Opened eyes will allow you to see his protection. God's protection was there all the time. God will take care of your health. He knows. He knows the amount of steps that we're going to take. And he knows when we're going to Breathe our last. He knows. Amen. What will open eyes do for you? Number five, open eyes allows you to see the wonders of God's word. Our text scripture says, open now mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Are you consuming the word of God as you should? Or is God teaching you the wonders of his word? Do not read the scriptures, the Bible. Do not read the Bible as a textbook. It will become boring. Read it because your loving God has given to you. He has allowed you to be birthed here in America where we have a full copy of the scriptures, the King James Bible. We have a full copy of it. 
what we've been given, we're going to give an account to God for what we've been given. You are given a free land and you are given Bibles by the hundreds that you could have purchased in your lifetime. What did you do with it? Ask God, open my eyes so I can behold wondrous things out of your law. I love what Psalms 19, 7 through 11 says. It says the law of the Lord can convert the soul. Your soul is your seat of emotions, where your, where your feelings are. And it can change how you feel about certain things. So if you have something that you believe would not please God, a feeling or, or a state of emotion where, where you, you think, you know, this, I don't think God would be pleased with that. Get into the word of God and let him convert your soul. Yes, into salvation, but then also after salvation so that you can enjoy the joy of his, his victorious Christian life. The word of God, I love what Psalms 19 says, it can also make wise the simple. Are there some areas where you're simple, where you, where you, 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 you need some wisdom? Well, get in the word of God. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about that. It will help you to be open so that he can inject in you exactly in your situation what you need to know. I love what Psalm 19 says. It says that God's word can in rejoice the heart. Does your heart need rejoicing? Does it need lifting up? Get in the word of God. God wants to rejoice your heart. He doesn't want us to live depressed lives. He can rejoice the heart. Get in the word of God. It says in Psalms 19, God can enlighten the eyes. He can not only bring brightness to your physical eyes, but also mentally, your mind's eye, your understanding. He can help you to see the bigger picture and put, point, put pieces together and have better understanding. You have that person in your life, and, and, and they're always that way. Well, if God could give you understanding about why they are that way, you'd be a little more patient with them, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. If you understand a little more about them, God's Word can help you be enlightened. God's word will also endure forever. It's true. It's righteous. It's sweeter than a honeycomb. It can, it can warn the servant, and it can give rewards. What will open eyes do for you? It'll allow you to see God's provision. It'll allow you to foresee God's wrath. It, it's an evidence of healing and, stri and life. It's a, it will allow you to see God's protection. It will allow you to see the wonders of God's word. It will also help you know and recognize Jesus. What does Jesus say in the scriptures? My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they follow me. Opened eyes will help you know and recognize Jesus. I love what Luke 24, 28 through 32, it talks about those two disciples in, uh, going on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus comes and walks with them. They didn't know it was Jesus. Their eyes were closed to the fact that this was the risen Savior. And it says, and it came to pass, uh, it, Jesus, he, he made us, he, though he would go further, they constrained him. They said, abide with us, for it's evening, the day is far spent. And he went into Terry with them. He sat at me with them. He broke the bread, and their eyes were open. They realized, oh, my goodness, we've been talking to Jesus all day long. Wow. You see, that's what open eyes will do for you. It will help you know and recognize Jesus. To help you see qualities about him and be able to see Jesus all around you. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know Jesus more than anything. And open eyes will help you know Jesus and recognize him. Number seven, open eyes will bring you controversy. Open eyes will bring you controversy. If you read John chapter 9, you find that Jesus healed a blind man on the Sabbath day. For shame, for shame. He healed a blind man on the Sabbath day. This man's been blind his whole life. What does it matter what day he gets healed? Not on the Sabbath day. No, you got to stay blind for another day, bud. You sound like Pharaoh. You know, when do you want the frogs to leave? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> It's like, why not now? I'm just, I just want to sleep one more night with the frogs. You know, they're, they're in my bread. They're in my bed. They're, they're, they're in my bathroom everywhere. These frogs are everywhere. I just want to sleep one more night with the frogs. 
But these, this man who got healed of his blindness on the Sabbath day, you read chapter 9, he got kicked out of the synagogue for this. He got kicked out. Curtis, it's like getting kicked out of the church for getting healed on a Sunday. The crime. What did he do? They accused him. You weren't even blind at the beginning. They even called in his parents. Is this your son? They're like, he's over 40 years old. Let him answer for himself. Opened eyes will bring you controversy. They made a big stink about him having opened eyes. And if you have opened eyes, it'll bring you controversy. It'll bring you controversy. This whole chapter, it documents the controversy caused by having opened eyes. Controversy to the former blind man and controversy to Jesus, the healer of the former blind man. Don't expect anyone to be happy about your opened eyes. Why? Because men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And when your eyes are opened, you'll be able to detect it. And they don't like that. What will open eyes do for you? It will allow you to see God's provision, allow you to foresee God's wrath. It's an evidence of healing in life. It will allow you to see God's protection, see the wonders of God's word. It will allow you to know and recognize Jesus. It will bring you controversy. And number eight, it will cause others to be convinced of the truth. What does it say in John 10, verse 14 through 21? I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. And the, as the father knoweth me, even so know I the father and lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall, be, there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I laid down my life, that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore, among the Jews for these sayings, and many of them said, He hath the devil and is mad. Why hear, why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that hath the devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Others said that. They were convinced of the truth. Jesus does not have the devil in him. Because the devil can't do this work. It convinces others of the truth. Your opened eyes will cause you to shed light on the truth around you and thus multiply the effect of opened eyes. Others, others will open their eyes and see the truth also. It will cause others to be convinced of the truth when your eyes are opened. Because then you'll, hey, this is how the situation is. And somebody right next to you will say, wow, I never saw it that way before. And you'll be able to help them understand the truth. Number nine, open eyes will cause some to have greater faith. Open eyes caused some to have greater faith in John 11 when Lazarus dies. In John chapter 11 when Lazarus dies. It says in verse 32, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if I, thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and Jesus also weeping, which came, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? You see, opened eyes caused others to have greater faith. Did you catch what the crowd believed that Jesus could do? They believed he could have kept Lazarus from dying. You see... The former blind man's opened eyes caused the multitude's mind to begin imagining even greater things that Jesus could be potentially capable of doing. He was trying to open their minds to greater things that God was wanting to do. Their faith in his capabilities was growing so that one day when they said he resurrected from the dead, it would be par for the course. Of course he resurrected from the dead because he's the son of God. He was trying to open their minds 
And that's what open eyes did for them. It caused them to have greater faith. It caused them to believe in more and more what he could do. And when God opens your eyes and changes your life, it'll cause those people in your life to see that change and believe that God can do great things. What does it say? Let your life so shine before men that they may glorify, that they may see your good works and what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. What will open eyes do for you? Number 10. Open eyes does wonders for the lost. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verses 12 through 18. It says, and I, in verse 15, it says, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of things in the, which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Opened eyes are not solely for the purpose of personal enjoyment. Do you understand? There we may have our eyes darkened spiritually, mentally, physically. Our eyes darkened about certain things in our life. But when we pray, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see the wonders of your law. Help me to see the full realm, the full spectrum of everything that you want me to see. But it's not just for our personal enjoyment. And it's not just for our personal consumption. It is also for the purpose of personal responsibility. What was Paul, what was Saul told he was going to do? You were going to open the eyes of the blind of the Gentiles and the nations outside of Israel. That's my purpose for saving you. It's not just for you to understand, oh yeah, Jesus is the Christ. Let me make those connections and write all these epistles. No, you're going to go out. And you're going to go help open their eyes. When Ananias later came to visit Saul, what happened when Ananias put his hands on Saul? The Bible says that blinding scales fell from his eyes. And he was able to see clearly his personal responsibility. That's, that's for us. That's for us. So about 400 years ago, a shipload of travelers landing, landed on the north, northeast coast of America. The first year, they established a town site. The next year, they elected a town government. The third year, the town government planned to build a road five miles westward into the wilderness. In the fourth year, the people tried to impeach their own town government because they thought it was a waste of public funds to build a road five miles westward into a wilderness. Who needed to go there anyway? Here were people who had their eyes open to see 3,000 miles across an ocean and overcome great hardships to get there, but in just a few years, they were not able to see even five miles out of town. They had lost their pioneering vision with a clear vision of what we can become in Christ. No ocean of difficulty is too great. Without it, we rarely move beyond our current boundaries. Open eyes. What will open eyes do for you? It'll allow you to see God's provision. You'll foresee God's wrath. It's an evidence of healing in life. You'll be able to see God's protection. You'll see the wonders of God's word. You'll know and recognize Jesus. It will bring you controversy. It will cause others to be convinced of the truth. It will cause some, some to have greater faith. And it will do wonders for the lost. How can I get my eyes opened? You ask? Number one, pray for God to do it for your own sake. Pray for God to do it for your own sake. What does the psalmist say? He says, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Pray, ask the Lord, open your eyes. Teach me things out of your word. When you read God's word, does it come alive or do, is that a challenge? How about you step back and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. How can you get your eyes open? Number two, pray for God to do it for others' sake. Pray for God to do it for others' sake. What did Elisha pray for the young man? He said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Do it for others. That's the Christian life motto. Others, Lord, yes, others, let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I may live like thee. Let me see this world, dear Lord, through your eyes when men mock your holy name. 
when they beat you and spat upon you, Lord, let me, let me love them as you love them just the same. Let me stand high above my petty problems and grieve for men hell-bound eternally. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these truths from your word. Help us, Lord, to be very desirous, hungry for opened eyes. Please, Lord. Satan want, wants to do his best to distract us and get us so focused on everything else but the truth. He's the master of loading our life up with a, a million good things all to sacrifice the one best thing. Please, Lord, help us to see that. Help us, Lord, open the eyes of our heart, open the eyes of our mind, open our physical eyes. Help us, Lord, to, to see your wonders all around us and live a life that praises and glorifies you every day. Please help us. Please help us. Put a hedge of protection about us. Help us to train our eyes to see Help us to train ourselves to, to pray and ask for it. Not just so that we see wonders out of your law, but that we can also pray it for others. Lord, help them to see. Help them to see your wonder and your power and your strength and the protection that you've provided. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Come ahead, Miss Melissa. Play hymn of invitation. The altar's open. The Lord spoke to your heart. How about you come and ask the Lord to Lord, help me to have open eyes. Help me to see what you want me to see. Help me to focus on what you might want me to focus. Help me to see your provision. Help me to see the wonders in your word. Make it come alive. Lord, more than anything, help me to have open eyes so I can help the lost find you. Let's pray. Our blue song, we can go to number 261. Number 261, we'll sing the first and last verse of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Number 261. 
Show me in the first. Oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Amen. That is so true. That is so true. When we get a better vision of Jesus, things of this world just cease to matter. Just cease to matter because that's the longing of our heart. God put that there to know and love our Creator. I failed to mention this during the, the uh, announcement time. I wanted to make sure that especially our bus uh, um, teens that they knew that we have a teen rally that we're planning on going to October 14th. That's in a few weekends, so just make a mental note of that. Ask your, ask your parents if, you, if uh, you have permission to go. And uh, we'll talk to Brother Moog about uh, uh, arranging a, a way to get, to get you here to the church. But it's the Lake Crest Baptist Church Youth, youth Rally. It's a lot of fun. We had a, we've been there probably three, two or three years now and uh, enjoy it every time. And uh, they really have a, a, do a good, good job there. So that's October 14th, October 14th. So make sure, I want to make sure that everybody knew about that, especially our, our bus teens as they're with us. So uh, if you would be in prayer this next uh, Sunday, um, please be faithful to church. I, I, I shudder to, to mention these, these uh, what I'm about to say, because I don't want you just to come for me. Um, I hope you come to hear the preaching of the Word of God and, and to support your, your church and, and uh, be an encouragement to the church family. But uh, if you would just be in prayer, I'll be traveling to Toronto uh, this next week to be with Brother Johnston for Saturday and Sunday. He's got a family conference. And he has asked me and Brother Dale, uh, he's the pastor of Lake Crest Baptist Church, where this teen rally will be in a, in a few weeks. But he has asked both of us from, uh, from here in Michigan to go and preach uh, at, his, at his church. And so just pray that the Lord will use us to be a blessing. And uh, please, please uh, be in your place. I just encourage you. We have uh, a visiting preacher going to be here, and I think you'll enjoy it. I've heard great things about him. So amen. Amen. All right, let's bow for prayer, and we will be dismissed. Brother Tony, do you mind praying for us? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this very encouraging and timely and truthful message, Lord, about having our eyes open. Many times we go through this life, we don't have our eyes open. We wonder why we have problems, Lord. We just pray, Lord, for our eyes to be open for those in our life. In our life, we would meet this week, have their eyes open to the truth. We know Satan has many Jesus' name we pray.